Good afternoon. Welcome to the UCR School of Medicine. My name is Emma Simmons and I'm the Selma Haida Endowed Chair for the Thomas Haida Program. And I am also the Senior Associate Dean of Student Affairs here at the School of Medicine. We're here today to talk about the Early Assurance Program, a wonderful program that we have at UCR that is exclusively for students who go to UCR undergraduate. So we always start any presentation that we do with the mission of the UCR School of Medicine. And our missions are to expand and diversify the physician workforce here in inland Southern California, to produce doctors that are trained for preventive care, public health and health education so that we can better treat our patients as well as to create residency programs for our physicians to train in those areas that we identify as short supply here in inland Southern California. And those areas are psychiatry, OBGYN, general surgery, family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, internal medicine, as well as just recently added is emergency medicine. Our goal, our ultimate goal, is to improve the health of the community we serve. So the Thomas Heider Early Assurance Program is, as I said earlier, a unique portal into the UCR School of Medicine. So what we want to do is to get students who we know are mission fit and would be great students at UCR School of Medicine before they go out into the general um, application pool for medical students. Each year we expect to take between eight to 10 students every year for this program. And this number of students that we take is not outside of the 24 seats that we've already previously committed um, for UCR HADA applicants. Okay, next slide, please. So our goal is to attract and recruit the very best students that we can from UCR undergraduate. So the typical student last year had a very strong science background. And last year was no different than any previous year, by the way. Our average BCPM um, GPA was a 3.73. We also look for students to have strong clinical experience, a commitment to serve, and importantly, who want to stay here to practice medicine in inland Southern California. So what do you get asked, or what does an admission committee look for when they're looking for students? And we're no different than any other admissions committee in the general characteristics that we look for, but the specific characteristics we look for, we'll talk about a little bit later. But the three questions that our admissions committee asked are, number one, can the student successfully complete all of the requirements of medical training? And this does not mean, can you take a test and get an A, or can you take a, a um, standardized test and get a high score? It means that you will be professional, you will be um, collaborative, and you will be committed. It means a lot more than just the academic things. The second question we ask is, does the applicant have the character traits need to be a good doctor? Now, if you come into medical school and you have a good heart and you have a good mind, then we are able to train you to become a good doctor. If you just come in with strong academics, a strong mind, and you don't have good character, then we can't really help you because those character traits are typically forged before you hit medical school. So we want to make sure through your letters of recommendations and through your interviews that you have those character traits that we want to see in a doctor in the future. So we look for those. And the last question, as we always go back to, is are the students mission fit? So what does it take to get into our medical school? You need eight semester hours of mathematics that includes calculus or statistics, the same amount of semester hours for physics, and for any of our um, sciences, the labs are optional. 
general chemistry, 16 semester hours, and it, you can, it also includes organic as well as biochemistry and biology, eight semester hours. So we also, because we do holistic review, very much want you to have some humanities experience. So that includes English, logic, critical thinking, writing, eight semester hours, well as we really recommend that you um, take um, at least three semester hours worth of Spanish because we have a very um, large Spanish speaking population here in inland Southern California. So the national average for admitted medical school students is about three seven. Most medical schools, however, don't just look at the national average or your national um, GPA. We look at your BCPM or your science GPA because that's what you're going to be doing more with medicine. Now, we value the humanities, but we really strongly look at the BCPM. And if you wanted to look at the students who we admitted last year for our class of 2024, for our regular Hyder students who are admitted that 24 that come from the undergraduate campus at UCR, their BCPM was 3.57. Next you will see that, and, and that was a range, it was a wide range. Next you will see that we had for our specific EAP applicants, and that's for those who are the, the creme de la crop, um, the GPA for the BCPM was a 3.73. So again, higher than, than most. And there was again, a range there, but the range was on the higher end of the spectrum. So in addition to the academics, we also look for graduation competencies. And these are things that we expect you to have um, when you graduate from, from the School of Medicine. We we partner, we take these, we, we um, mirror these from the graduate medical um, education requirements, those of residency programs. And those include, you need to know how to have a knowledge for your practice. You need to know how to take care of your patients. You need to have those communication skills and interpersonal skills that you can relate to your patients and communicate with your patients. Obviously you need to be professional to not only your colleagues, but your, um, your um, people you work with um, from um, outside of medicine, as well as your patients. Practice-based learning and system-based practice are very important as well as interprofessional collaboration. And we always, medicine is always a continuing medical um, adventure. So professional and personal development are always front and center. We also have many core personal competencies that we look at um, and the core values are obviously things that you bring into the medical school with you. Your integrity and your ethics are very important. Are you reliable and dependable? And then once you get into medical school, we want to see that you're resilient and adaptable and you constantly look for ways in which to improve yourself from when you started medical school. And then obviously when you become a doctor, you do need competencies and we talked about some of those that you would need to be a successful physician. And those are teamwork, oral communication, being able to be culturally humble, having social and interpersonal skills that allow you to connect effortlessly with your patients and obviously being service oriented. So we look at extracurricular activities because extracurricular activities tell us a lot about the students. We look at your clinical experiences to make sure that you're able to um, be around blood, guts, and bad smells. We look at your community service to see if you're service oriented. We look at your leadership. We look at your uh, professional development. Have you attended conferences to try to make yourself a better student or to learn more about the profession of medicine? And we look at if you've had to work outside of medicine, I mean, outside of your school. Because many students um, do not have 
um, silver spoons in their mouth when they're born. So they have to work. And we consider that a, a great plus, a great benefit for us when we're looking at students to accept into the School of Medicine. Now, one thing we must have when you apply for medical school, one thing we must see is clinical experience. Obviously, if you wanted to, to um, fly an airplane, you need to have flown an airplane before. So that is non-negotiable. You have to have some experience being around patients. It doesn't mean that you have to be in a hospital or in an outpatient center, but it does mean that you need to be around sick people, sick patients. So this experience should be significant, not just going in and seeing a doctor and shadowing, shadowing them and saying, I know exactly what a doctor needs to do. You need to be around people for a while. You need to be able to um, change bed sheets or um, to, to clean up vomitus or to um, bandage a burn. You need to be around patients who are sick and who are not at their very best. It doesn't matter where you are, but as long as they're a patient. And ensure that you have enough time you know, two hours is good, but we want to see more than two hours because we want to see that you can do it on a sustained basis. So if you have a significant amount of time invested into your clinical experience, we need to see a ladder of recommendation from that specific clinical experience also. Community service is very important and it should be meaningful, something that you really are dedicated to and something that you're committed to. So you don't have to have 15 or 20 of them. We see that if you're trying to do check marks, saying that I've done so many activities, look at me. No, we look at meaningful activity that you're committed to something and it's over a period of time. This is where you build your leadership and your teamwork skills. It doesn't mean that you have to be president of a club, but you might have headed the um, social committee and you started a um, toy drive or something that shows the leadership. It doesn't have to be a title. We just want to see that leadership capacity come out of you. And again, we want to see a letter of recommendations showing how well um, the organization valued you and what you've done to make the organization or the community a better place to be. Similarly, professional development. We wanna see that you've read about um, articles that, you've, that you are interested in. So um, if you're interested in ophthalmology, we wanna see that you've done some conferences in, in the ophthalmic field. We wanna know that you care about people who are underserved in medicine or who are disadvantaged in medicine. So you know about health disparities because they are a very real and present danger to good medical care. And we wanna see that you just not only attended seminars, but attended seminars and got something from them. Time management is something that you will definitely need when you're in medical school networking, as well as communication skills. You will see that coming up over and over again. Before you get into, many, into medical schools, I don't know of any medical school that doesn't give you an interview. And why do we give you interviews? So we can get to know you a little bit better. We want to look at your communication skills, your problem solving skills, your mission fit for us, for sure, we look at the mission fit and then we also use that to, to um, try to further understand your professionalism and the leadership that you put in your application. <clears throat> we come back to why do admissions committee need to know much about you? Because they want you to be a good fit for their medical school. And three questions that we ask in order to know that you're a good fit is number one, can you complete all of the requirements of medical school? Number two, do you have the traits that we need in an applicant to be a good doctor? And specific to UCR, we ask, are you mission fit? So in order to get into the early assurance program or to apply for the early assurance program, you have to have 
a minimum of four quarters at UCR prior to applying. If you do not have that, then do not apply to the school. And you have to have at least six quarters by the time you enter into medical school at UCR School of Medicine. And that's not a lot because normally um, applicants have at least seven or more quarters before applying to us at UCR School of Medicine. You must have be within one year. So if you're more than one year of graduation from UCR, um, from UCR undergraduate, then you can apply. That is if you have not previously applied to any medical school. So once you've applied to a medical school and once you're more than one year out of school at UCR, you're no longer eligible for the early assurance program. You can apply to the general um, program where you still are counted in the 24 higher numbers, but not for the early assurance program. It's a very specific competitive program. We look for students who have a GPA a BCPM GPA above 3.4. We look for community service, clinical experience, commitment to work to stay here in inland Southern California. Those are our mission fit criteria. And if you um, commit to um, join the early assurance program, you, um, you say that you will never um, enroll in another medical school or you will not apply to another medical school. It's a commit commitment is a relationship. So let me just tell you some of the statistics of, of our early assurance programs, um, re recipients and matriculants, as well as the hiders for the previous um, year. We had 65 people apply for the EAP program in this last cohort, as compared to 126 applying for the regular hider portal. We interviewed 62 of those in the HIDA portal and accepted 10. For the EAP, out of the 65 application, we interviewed 16 and accepted 12. So 12 will enter not in this year, but you apply for the previous year. So they will uh, enter into next year, into the 20, 2021 um, cohort. So that's the class of 2025. For the HIDER, they entered this year 15 students, 10 from the previous EAP from the um, 20, 2019. As you can see, the BCPM for um, the EAP is higher as we've already talked about 373 and the MCAT was 508, but that's not a real value because most of our EAP students do not take the MCAT and we don't necessarily um, encourage you to take the MCAT. If you do take the MCAT, then we do count it. And one student did take the MCAT and their MCAT was 508. Next slide, please. So you're not, apply, you're, not, you're not permitted to apply to other medical schools when you apply to EAP if you are accepted. If you're not accepted, you're free to apply to other medical schools. You can only join EAP if you are an in-state resident and if you are a student at UCR undergraduate campus. Next slide. So it's a different application process than the MCAS general application process. You have to apply for our own specific EAP or early assurance program application. You have to send in an official um, transcript copy you have to have three letters of recommendation. You can have up to five, but a minimum of three and a photograph of yourself. Now, the deadline for EAP applications this year or next year is Thursday, April 1st at noon. If you submit an application at 1201, even if your computer broke down, we do not accept it. We, we advise you to get it in early because the deadline is Thursday, April 1st at 12 noon. So when you apply, we have a committee that looks at your MCATs, I mean, not your MCAT, your GPA. We look at your, um, your um, CV that shows your 
service activities as well as your clinical activities. And we are aware that we are in a pandemic right now and that your activities are not gonna be as robust as in previous years. We take that certainly into consideration. So don't fret if you don't have as many activities as you would have had in a normal non-pandemic year. And we ask you to commit that you will not apply to any other school because if you get into the MAP, if, if you get into the EAP program, we count you as one of those students in the class of 2025 or the class of 2026, whichever cohort you get into. So we count you as, as one of us and we've already started the proceedings to make you a member of the class. Now, even though you apply through a different in a different manner, we still ask you when it's time for you to enroll uh, or matriculate that year that you also fill out the AMCAS application like every other student has. And you just go through a special portal for that. And we can tell you more about that once you are admitted. And any scholarship that any other student is, a, is um, eligible for, you will also be eligible for through the EAP program. But in addition, you get a special scholarship that's given only to EAP students. You are in a special program um, courtesy of the hires who have been very generous to this program. So what are the advantages of going through EAP? Well, number one, you don't have to apply for medical school, spend a lot of money, get on a plane and travel all over the country, um, interview, be nervous, study for the MCAT. You get a lot of free time to find out who you are, to travel, to, you know, to, to explore things that you never thought you would have had time to explore in the past. So you get more flexibility, more freedom, and a little bit more money in your pocket. What are the disadvantages of applying to the early assurance program? Obviously, because it's a different, different application, it's not one that you can just turn around and immediately use for a general application in a, in a traditional MCAS um, application. So you're spending additional time that you could be studying or studying for the MCAT, studying for your, your biochemistry phys, um, um, examination or whatever examination you're studying for. So the time and effort is a disadvantage. As well as every, everyone is at risk of being rejected, whether you apply to the EAP program or if you apply to the general HIDO program or if you apply in the general, um, in the general market, obviously there is the risk of uh, rejection. But there's also the, the, um, the benefit of being accepted. So you, nothing ventured, nothing gained, you have to try. Now, there are always a couple of questions that students ask us. So I wanted to go ahead and put that on the slides today. And the first question is, can I apply both to the EAP program and a regular Thomas Heider program through the MCAS? And the answer is, of course you can. The, the caveat is you cannot do it both in the same application cycle. You must do EAP first and then MCAS second, because remember, you cannot apply to EAP if you've applied to another program or if you've been more than one year out of undergraduate um, education. If I apply to the EAP program, will it account against me if I'm rejected? Absolutely not, it does not. So it is, we don't count it towards the three maximum applications that you um, get when you apply to UCR School of Medicine. So there is no real, um, downside to applying to the EAP program other than, as I said earlier, that you do have to spend time putting in a application for a very unique program. So again, applications will be due on April 1st of next year at noon. We will make them available. The applications start December the 1st and you have this um, website EAP period, M-E-D-S-C-H period, U-C-R period, E-D-U. That website is where you will start to apply as of December 20, as of December 1st. So 
we strongly, strongly advise you to get advice on whether or not you should apply from Charlie Scruggs or Amber Nicholson at HPAT, or if you are in one of the School of Medicine pipeline programs from Ms. Teresa Cofield. So at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions. And I thank you so much for coming to hear about the Early Assurance Program at UCR School of Medicine.